So we want to find the um, area that's shaded in blue. And to find it, we do know that the area comes from the um, integral, right? The integral of a curve. However, we do need to consider this problem a little bit deeper because it does have its particularities. Now, um, I cannot integrate it. Rather, it's not that I can't, but it would be very difficult for me to find the area um, if I wanted to consider um, the upper and lower boundaries um, being vertical, because at every point, the not at every point, but at many points, the upper and lower functions, they change. So for example, in this first point, uh, my upper curve is the line y equals one, and my lower curve is the pink line. Um, at this other point over here, my upper curve is y equals one, my lower curve is y equals negative one. And at this point over here, um, my upper curve is the same as my lower one, which is the blue line. So I don't want to integrate it with respect to x. I do want to integrate it with respect to y. Um, and I just want to spend some time talking about what this really means, because uh, where does the idea of the area beneath the curve come from? It comes from this fact over here. If I have, say, a random curve that goes like this, right? The area comes from summing up a bunch of rectangles, and you will have seen this already um, in the Riemann sums. So the idea comes from taking, you know, uh, taking the height of this rectangle at some point in the function. So this is just the value of the function f of x. But just the height isn't enough to give you an area. You do need a width, right, to get the, the area of this rectangle over here. And we do have the width um, dx, which stands for a little difference of x or a little, you know, a tiny bit of the base. So without this base, we would not be able to have an area. We would just have, you know, a point in the function. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just use the same idea, but now it's going to be horizontal instead of vertical rectangles. So uh, our rectangles are going to go like here. And we can clearly see here that um, the height, right, the height is just the pink curve minus the blue curve. So the pink curve over at this point over here minus the blue curve at this point over here. Um, so there we have our height. What about our width? As we said, we cannot have area without the width. Well, our width is going to be um, over here, right? And this is going to be a little dy, which is a small bit of the y-axis, which we cut up, right? Which is uh, analogous to this dx over here, where we cut up the x-axis. So this is what we mean by integrate with respect um, to y. So with all of this said, we're going to set up our integral with respect to y. Um, now, they, they've been very nice to give us very clearly these boundaries over here, right, of integration, which are the bounds y is equal to negative 1 and y is equal to 1. So we do know that this is our uh, boundary, so from negative 1 to 1. And now we just have to consider the height. Now, the height is the area beneath the pink curve, right? Um, but it's not the whole area beneath the pink curve. We do have to... Uh, we do have to consider the lower boundaries, the lower bound, sorry, which is the blue curve. Because if I were just to take um, the area beneath beneath the pink curve, it would it would be it would be this. Um, and I, I I do not want all of this stuff. I want just a part of it. So I do have to remove this all this other area. Um, and this other area is the area beneath the blue curve, right? So I do have to take the area beneath the pink curve and remove um, part of it so that I can purely get that um, intersection. Okay, so with this being said, um, we are ready to put our, our curves in. And notice that these curves are already expressed as a function of x, right? Not as a function of y. 
So we can now perfectly just input them into our equation without changing anything. So the upper function is e to the y, and then minus the lower function, which is minus um, y squared minus 2, and then all of this times dy, because once more, we're integrating with respect to y. So let's just clean it up a little bit, and hopefully I can write it uh, with better handwriting. So uh, negative 1 to 1 from e y, and then this is minus y squared, and then minus and minus plus 2, and all of this times dy. Um, so once we have this, uh, integration becomes very simple, right? Uh, the integral of e to the y is just e to the y, and then minus y cubed over 3, and then plus 2y, and all of this um, between negative 1 to 1. So let's just apply, oops, I wrote accidentally negative 1 on top. So let's just apply our boundaries now. Um, so this is e to the 1 minus uh, 1 cubed is just 1, right? Minus 1 third, and then plus 2 minus e to the negative 1, and then minus... Uh, minus y cubed evaluated at negative 1, it just becomes plus 1 over 3, and then um, minus 2, right? So when we uh, simplify this a little bit, this becomes e um, minus 1 third plus 2 minus 1 over e minus 1 third and then minus and minus plus 2. So when we clean this up, this is equal to e minus 1 over e. And then what do we have here? We have minus 2, minus 2 thirds, right? Plus 4, which gives us um, plus 10 over 3. So yeah, this is the purely analytical answer. Um, if you did want to simplify it, let me put this in my calculator. Um, plus 10 over 3, that will give us uh, 5.68. So yeah, um, that's it. This example is just different because it we have to integrate it with respect to y. Um, but the whole logic of it doesn't change.